Hello, welcome to He's Hot But Something's Off With Me, Just Joey T. And today we have a very special guest. David, I am recovering after a big weekend. Yeah, so David uh, usually lives in Melbourne in Australia, but he was just in EDC Vegas this past weekend, and you are still going through it a little bit. Yeah, it's a slow recovery, but look, I've got all my fingers and toes, and I am alive, which is a miracle. <laughs> Actually, miracle. a miracle. I was, I was conscious the entire time. That's, it's a, uh, it, 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 if you guys know anything about me and David, that's already a, a big accomplishment when we go to one of these big parties. Wait, you haven't been to EDC in ages. You went like in 2017, I think, uh, or 20, 2018? 2016, actually. Okay. And uh, no, this was good, but I show my voice too, I just realized. I'm actually good. It's okay. It's Wednesday. Yeah, so as we're recording, it's Wednesday and the podcast yeah. will go out in like- Thursday morning. So we're Wait, recording tomorrow? this. Yeah. So, oh yeah. So this is actually the second episode of the podcast. Um, and going forward, um, there's going to be a new episode of this podcast every single Thursday. Wow. Uh, that's going to get released. It'll be a weekly Thursday podcast. Thursday Thursdays with Joey. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I don't know why I said See, that. This is why I need you here on the podcast more often, but you're like the comic relief. I'm, I'm not really that funny a person. I'm here because you're paying me in cheesecake, which I actually got, which we don't know if it's cheesecake or not. Okay, so one we'll thing you guys will want to know about David is he loves his desserts and snacks. I remember we were filming a YouTube video uh, last fall when you were visiting here again, and it was me, you, and our friend Jeremy. And you had a bag of chips that was just oh, out of shit. camera. <laughs> and then if you, the intro of the video, basically you were eating chips. And at one point in filming, I basically yelled you, stop eating. Yeah, there's a <laughs> And we kept it in as the intro for the video because it was funny. I'm definitely not professional or prepared in any way, but feed, feed me with food. Well, feed me. I'm one hungry. interesting thing is I've never seen you in action like at work. Yes, that's but, a blessing. <laughs> well, I, 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 I guess, but like, but I feel like, even though I've never seen you like work, work, you're professional when you're working. Honestly. Oh yeah, for sure. I'm a completely different person. It's my two face, second face. Uh, yeah. But I feel like everyone has that thing where there's they have their work mode and then they have like their non work mode. Like when someone's like on the job, mm. you know, it's almost like a different person because you know they 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 they're doing their work, so it's just you know they oh, behave differently. One hundred percent. Everyone has that. Yeah, no, one hundred percent. People in America probably know me differently than people in Australia, so it looks like I'm two different people, which I kind of am because <laughs> of a lot of uh, caffeine that I take. You take caffeine at these parties? I do. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, we'll definitely get, we'll get into that for sure. Um, yep. so, um, you actually camped at. Uh, EDC this year. You've never done camp before. Yes. And how was that experience? It was actually amazing. It was truly, uh, I can't imagine doing it another way, but I really feel that I lucked out with the with our friend Brandon yeah. and James from Chicago. They organized everything. So good vibes, good organization, good RV, good locations. So I just had to say, yep, tell me where to pay. And then I was just uh, like a dumb little ventriloquist dummy on the ride and they dragged <laughs> me along and we were getting lit and it was amazing. So um, oh yeah, super grateful to them. But a really good experience overall actually. Yeah, like EDC, every time I went to EDC Vegas specifically because I have EDC in different places. EDC Vegas, I've always had the most fun. But the thing is logistically is one of the more difficult parties or festivals to get to because first of all it's you know it's a little ways away from las vegas like where the strip is it's out in the um las vegas uh speedway yep and then the second thing is there's so many people that go i think the stats is something like they get like a hundred thousand people that come in every day don't quote me on that it's something like that but it's like a massive amount of people that like go in every single day. Like the crowds are just like crazy. It's just a different level than like most other festivals you can go to. It's overwhelming. And actually if to get from point A to point B, like once you're in a place that you choose, it's good. But literally when you're walking at night, <laughs> sometimes it feels like you're walking for 50 years through the crowds of people. And uh, yeah, people are linking hands and everyone's got different agendas, but uh, like, the best times are when you can stay in one place for maybe two or three sets and then you can sort of really get into it. But when you're walking to and from, it is... It, 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 it's, 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 
It's overwhelming. a project in and of itself to get from one place to another at EDC Vegas. Overwhelming. Honestly. Oh yeah, what we didn't lose we I think uh, my group didn't lose each other that much. So overall it was a success. Thank God for those totems. Oh my God, yeah, the, the totems are the best. I'm the kind of person where I like to wonder every so often. So the what I like to do is I want to know where my group is. So usually the schedule comes up beforehand, like which DJs and artists are playing at what stage. Yep. And a lot of my friends, I'm, we're not that much into EDM music. Not like some of our friends. Our friends would be like, oh, Let's see, like, this act at this stage, they're on at this time. They go through, like, the whole schedule the days before leading up to it. And then I just copy wherever everyone else is going. So I know where everyone is kind of supposed to be. Like, at 10 p.m., they're seeing this person at Kinetic Field. At 11.30, they'll be at Circuit Ground C to see this other act. So I kind of sort of know if I ever wander off or get bogged down or whatever, I know, okay, the group should be here. I know what everyone's totems look like. I actually take photos of people's totems early on if possible. So I kind of yep. sort of have a recollection of what it looks like. But I kind of like to wander around a little bit, but there's so much to do at EDC. There's like rides you can go on. There's like so much food. Yep. There's like yep. all these other things you can do. So do you end up like doing anything else besides just going to the stages? Uh, you were, you're pretty independent. I'm I am, yeah. fiercely <laughs> the opposite. What's the opposite independent? I'm completely reliant Clingy. on my group. Clingy, codependent. So I, <laughs> I don't have any particular like, I didn't have any like must sees person. I was just following my you RV. You stick, stick with the group, yeah. And I was not barely seeing things. So I was just following the group, vibing around. And then once I got to a place, I was just jumping up and down. So, <laughs> but yeah, the to totems. And also we actually did um, light up headgear. So our group had- Nice, like uh, bunny light ears head headgear. It was yeah, different crowns and things. And that really, really helped. Yeah, for sure. In a crowd, for sure. It actually helped a lot when you you break up. So- yeah, anyways, it's still coming down, but it was epic. <laughs> and it's just the scale of it is- The scale of it is massive. Unimaginable, yeah, truly. Yeah. Really good. And I don't want to think about another party at the moment. It's always like that though. Like every time you go to like a big party, it's just that it's so tiring to go to one of these parties yep. that like right after you get back, you don't want to think about another party nah. for like a week. Yeah, I don't want to see another- Effing light thing ever <laughs> for just yet. If, if, you, if, you hear, if, you, if you hear any EDM in like the next two or three days, you're gonna like flip a table. No BPMs <laughs> plus 100, please. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. But the camping experience though, like this is your first time. And I think we talked a little bit uh, about it earlier. It's, I feel like once you've done camp, assuming you didn't have like a bad experience at camp, but you know, just some things that could go wrong maybe mm. here and there. But like once you do camp, I feel like it's kind of hard to go back to not doing the camp for EDC? Well, the benefits, uh, the main benefit is the not the logistics of not waiting in line for those shuttles either yes. before and after with the traffic. Yeah. So we literally, we had a really good spot with our group. So after we were finished at whatever time, we just walked back, walked across the road and we were able to get to the RV within, I don't know, like 10, 15 minutes of leaving the grounds. That's really close. Then. Amazing. So it was yeah. just like a walk and then it's a, that the whole community is a vibe and you're sort of living there. So it's sort of like a cruise in that sense, but you're sort of living at the party and then it's a collective space where they continue to party after the 12 hours of partying with these after parties at these events. And so I don't know how these people did it. Actually, I know how they did it. I'm <laughs> you not gonna did say it. How, I'm not going to say how they did it, but <laughs> sunglasses and parasols and umbrellas were needed because it was getting hot in the morning. Yeah, it is out in the desert, so it does get pretty warm. And I, I feel like the thing with the, with the camp is you're... You're at EDC the entire time, whereas for a lot of other parties, like you go to the party from your hotel or your house or whatever, and then you leave the party and you go back to your hotel or your house. You, you kind of get detached from the party. But when you're camping, you're never really like a way away from the music festival. Like you might be in your tent or you might be in your RV and yeah, you're, you're in a bed, but like you're still kind of sort of there. Yeah, you definitely need to be a party person, which you think you would be going to a big event like EDC, but you definitely have to for camp. Forego, I think you definitely you have to be forego a party person. certain comforts uh, Such as. for that. Well, for RVs, depending how you go, obviously a personal space is a little bit restricted. Of course, yeah, true. You're sharing uh, an RV usually. Perfect, perfect hot showers at a hotel would be completely different. So it's just certain things that you you balance it within yourself. But it's an experience and. 
uh, it's only what the fourth year I think they've done it. It's only been recent. Uh, I says. don't know how long they've had Camp EDC. To be completely honest, we're not like we're, we haven't been going to EDM festivals or EDC for like that long. I think the first time we went was like 2016 was the very first time I we went to any sort of EDM festival, and it was EDC Vegas. Yeah, I just think uh, yeah if. If you know people who've done it, I think that's probably the best way to do it. But it's Definitely. I had a good experience, honestly. So overall positive. Yeah. Win-win. So you went this year. Um, I didn't go uh, for, you know, other reasons, uh, uh, which were numerous. But I think next year, I would definitely want to go. Um, I almost went this year. But it you was did. it was very much like, well, I won't FOMO if I don't go. And if the stars align and things kind of fall into place and it was like not a lot of hoops for me to jump through to like get a ticket and get a shuttle pass and have a place to stay and all that but it was just like i didn't fomo though security was really nice that's all i'll say that's good mm -hmm. um <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's a little bit of subtext there that i think really we lovely. won't like dive into that subtext they're really friendly they were all very blurry yeah no they, they, they were I mean, very all like, like have a good time guys be safe drink lots of water so yeah really nice. that is generally like that every year that i went to edc like the the staff and like the security people generally yeah. are all very nice yeah there's there wasn't that much like yeah, I mean, not that I have anything to really label to, but there was no, like, aggressive... Sometimes you have, like, bouncers at clubs that are aggressive, and there was really yeah, no Yeah, that's very different. That, that's, like, they're no. all super... So that's, like, straight clubs, honestly. Yeah, yeah, straight clubs have, like, a very... Uh, I feel like has very aggressive bouncers, but, like, we never go to straight clubs. Everyone was <laughs> happy, like a stereotype, probably. and everyone's serotonin was elevated. It was great. Yeah, is there, uh, elevated for a few days, then... Uh, yeah. and then on fumes and then on Monday. <laughs> exactly right. Just... <laughs> Powered by thoughts of cheesecake and nothing else. Oh my God. So literally like f earlier in this afternoon, we were just ran, we were watching uh, Master Chef, and then I guess David got hungry and he's like, and, and they were making cheesecake for one of the challenges. And then David just like got in his phone and just ordered us some cheesecake, some Japanese cheesecake. I think hopefully it's Japanese cheesecake. We'll find out. It's we'll find out. We, we're, we just had dinner and then we're going to be re recording this podcast right now. And then we're going to try out the Japanese cheesecake. It doesn't look that whatever from the outside. It looks very unassuming when we open the box. Yeah, it looks just like sponge, but I'm here I don't for want the cake. sponge cake. But the thing is, if this turns out to be not good cheesecake, we're going to get more get cheesecake, cheesecake tomorrow. tomorrow. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm powered by cheesecake. This is why I'm here. I volunteered yeah, yeah. as a tribute for the cheesecake. And also like yesterday, um, I I, uh, volunt I asked if we needed a ride and you're like, uh, I think I don't need a ride. And he's like, well, it'd be an excuse for us to go get Boba. And he's like, oh, Boba, I'm in. <laughs> boba anytime. Because, oh, that's the one thing. There was Boba in quotations at the camp and that was crap. But the other food was good. Chicken was good. So, how, okay. It's, so, so the thing about EDC before we switch topics is um, at Camp EDC, if, if you're... Coming in with an RV, you can bring in like as much groceries and food and stuff with the RV as you want, basically, yep. including like liquids and drinks and stuff. But if you are camping in one of the tents, there's only so much like stuff you can lug with your hands, honestly, mm -hmm. to like if you're in a tent. So you're going to be re relying completely on the food there at camp. And the food there is not cheap. No, it's not cheap. It's like $18 for like a breakfast burrito or something like that. Yeah, you're paying for the Anything that's like you might consider an entree is like... 17 to 20 dollars that range i think is, is is that kind of sort of what yeah, you saw yeah kind of uh yeah if your appetites are there then you're sort of out paying a bit but luckily yeah we had we were ready and we brought some snacks and stuff so how much was that boba which uh, which is air quotes uh, boba which uh, is not, wasn't very good was I it i want to say north of 12 dollars oh god you can't remember and it definitely wasn't a normal was. boba in la is like five bucks five or six dollars it was like white people boba i don't know what the hell it was it so was what like, was it <laughs> what were you drinking it was chewy balls in like mango i don't i don't know so it was, so it the was boba honest. itself was not no it was weird it's just <laughs> it was chewy ball there were chewy balls and they were in it's like tea it has like mango tea with chewy balls okay i don't like that i mean my, my taste buds were shot so i mean the thing is like if if, if you're gonna have like just the one boba place in awe of Camp EDC, even if it isn't, might not be the most popular drink, like have it be like proper good boba, honestly. Yeah. I, I, I wonder like who is responsible for picking the vendors for EDC. It, it was I don't, I don't think they do like a te taste testing before they select nah, the vendors, it just was, like whoever. It was definitely regrets. And there was like, a, yeah, it was regrets. That's all I'll say. Yeah, if I spent like 12 bucks on crappy boba, and it's probably a small boba, it, was, it wasn't big, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. It's no. like a 12, 16 ounce little thing. No bar. No bar. <laughs> no bar. No, no bar. Oh my God. That's horrible. No bar. 
Yeah. Um, I do want to um, maybe one year. Uh, is it called a um, a, what's the one in Europe in the summertime? Oh, uh, Tomorrowland. Tomorrowland. Yeah, I want to go to tomorrow. It's on my list. I've never been. Belgium, August, I believe. I think August, it's Belgium. Yeah, I think it's in the summertime. Mm-hmm. Not this year, maybe the year after. It's even after. more harder to get to, to EDC with the tickets. So. EDC is not that hard to get tickets to, honestly. As long as you're not waiting till like the last minute. I don't think it's that hard to get tickets to EDC. No, but like, a lot of them just gave, got rid of them like this last weekend, so like on the day. There are always people that, you know, got tickets months and months ago and they just can't go yep. because like some work thing or like, I don't know, their sister's getting married or whatever shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All that kind of stuff. Well, all right, cool. So yeah, uh, so overall you would recommend it. You would recommend Camp EDC. You, you had fun, obviously. I had fun, but like if you ask me in a week, I'll be much more positive about it. <laughs> <laughs> you you sound still, a little, I'm you like sound so a tired. little I'm very tired. For people that don't know what David usually sounds, he sounds a little, little bit I'm tired. I'm low key now. But, but that, that just key. means you, you, you partied hard and you party right. Yeah, yeah, You exactly. know, you don't, you don't, you don't go to ADC and just be like, oh, I'm just going to go home early and yeah, you know, exactly. whatever. No, no, we did the, we did after hours every, every bloody day. <laughs> I normally don't do after hours and uh, my body was crying by the third day. But but now that looking back on it, you are glad that you like did the extra stuff. Uh, um, <laughs> look, the regret's still there, but it was, a, no, but you, you're there and it's like, you, it's an experience, right? So it's not every day you Have get to been, do camp, exper- camp EDC. That's true. Like camp EDC is a very unique experience. Like if I were you like, and I've never done camp before, I would be like, and I was kind of on the fence about doing afters, whatever, I'd be like, well, I mean, let, let, let's just let's just try it. This is how my RV mates got me. They're like, "Oh, we're only here once. Oh my god, it's." I'm like, "Oh god, okay, fine." Oh my god. So oh, I, I feel like me. you're you're you might not be doing EDC every year, but I think so. A lot of the people you were RV mates with are like based in the US, right? <gasps> yes, and they're like all... our friends James and Brandon uh, from Chicago. I feel like they probably go they go to EDM stuff. No, series, they, they know that they know what they're doing. They know the acts. They knew people by their names. I'm just like everything. David get a yes. Tag along. Tag David along. get a yes. David get a yes. They're like, David get a was like yesterday, you idiot. I'm like, David get a yes. <laughs> they know their names. They know their sets. They know their grounds. So they're walking and I'm just following them. So thank God for that. But I'm just like, David get a I'm mainstream trash. Yes. Anyways, <laughs> oh there were beats, there were music, there were lyrics. And I was feeling good. So it was good. Awesome. All right, switch topics a little bit. We are both fans of, not huge fans, but moderate fans of RuPaul's Drag Race. Oh, yes. Yeah, and yes. there's a, there's an all-star season on right now. Uh, we're up to episode three. and Some stars, yes. <laughs> some, uh, RuPaul's Drag Race, some stars, mm-hmm. season eight. Um, and I have, I have thoughts. What are you, I also, <laughs> please <laughs> we, tell me your we thoughts. We have thoughts and we're going to like, Dive into it. Oh, is this why we're here? Is this why you brought me here? To talk about RuPaul's? It's one of the things I wanted to talk to you about on the podcast. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. I'm interested. Go, go. But go. I definitely like where it, it, it's, it's one of the very few TV shows that we both watch. Usually I True. don't watch any, like, I don't follow any shows. The only thing I follow that is on TV is RuPaul's Drag Race when it's on and Formula One. And no one in the US cares any shit about well, Formula Well, they're both one. racing, I guess. Kind there of. you go, bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, we're all caught up. We've watched all the episodes and also all the Untucked, and we yep. uh, also watch all the pit stops. Yep. Yeah. So the first thing that um, I have comments on, which there are a ton of memes about this on the internet already, is in the Untucked for the first episode uh, when Alexis Michelle got all emotional that you know she didn't know how she was going to be perceived while. The bottom two queens are fucking on the verge of being eliminated, possibly. And Alexis Michelle just fucking pipes in out of nowhere with her. I don't even think she cried. Like, it just kind of sound. She, she made a sound that was... Fake crying? Fake sobbing? But it was more It was more extreme than poor Monica, who was actually had a reason to cry. Yeah, it exactly. Was just like... So it's just like, where the fuck are you coming from, bitch? And I think she was, wasn't she crying about like, oh, I was um, scared about how I would be received. Yeah, how she would be like perceived. And that's what she was crying the, about. Yeah, it's like, okay, first of all, you're crying about nothing. <laughs> Second of all, like you're totally like stealing thunder and focus, not in like the smoothest way, Yeah. by the way. Well, yeah, Monica's just sitting there be like, well, fuck my struggles right now. Well, the thing was also like, the she she said what she said and she acted like the way that way, but the producers also then added the sound effects because everyone was like, everyone thinking, was like, everyone was thinking the same thing. Yeah. What are you doing? 
Like, like the others would have eye rolled if it didn't look so rude. Like, yeah, like I, it's just someone yeah taking drama. It was just really, <laughs> I can't. I have no words. <laughs> you didn't know. I, I didn't see the Untucked until just today. Correct, correct. So I'm watching Watch this, together. and I'm like, oh. and unfortunately, I think that she may not be the most likable queen. So it's probably not going to be. I'm just going to say she's definitely not winning the Fame Games. So, well, you also mentioned to me earlier that you are not personally that much of a fan of Alexis. Like, I'm very like, I don't know that much about her. I'm very just like indifferent. Oh, uh, uh, no, just from her season. Which oh, I, from her season, yeah. Yeah, because that's all we know them from, right? True, And I true. think she did something unlikable in her season about us. Like, like, she complained to the judges, I believe, that the girls didn't tell her her dress was ugly. Oh, like when she so was she getting she critiques or something. Yeah, so she blamed the other people. So oh. if you didn't take ownership, if you didn't take ownership for that, then that's what I was like. But she seems very like sort of try hard energy. I think her makeup skills are really good actually. I think her makeup and, skills has improved. And it's a, a glow up, but I think the personality, I think she just, um, she comes across as trying too hard, which could just mean she loves drag a lot or whatever. I mean, sure, I mean, I mean I, I'm not super, I, I'm, fine, I'm fine with try hard. I think, you know, the, your point about her on her season mentioned a judge is like, what well, the other queens didn't say nothing about it. It's like, okay, you've got eyes, you've got a mirror, yeah. like, you know, bitch, you, everything you put on yourself, not in you know, a drag queen or not, just like regular people every day getting dressed. I mean, you have to like the outfit before other people will like it probably. Yeah, she gives me a little bit of uh, the same energy as Lucy LaDuca actually, <laughs> for some reason. No, no, that's just a, like it's a, it's a try hard energy, right? Um, and some people can come off like more charming, and some people can come off try hard. But that's just an opinion. I don't know. I'm not, yeah, not the biggest fan of her. But we'll see. She might change my mind. Most likely not. Yeah, I mean, it, the, the thing with, with All Stars rules is that you know you have to have the other queens have some amount of like respect for you. Yeah, you know, right? Because it is like. Queens voting other queens off. Mm -hmm. You know, they're drawing lipsticks every single whatever, and it's it's very it, it's very unlikely that um, there's not going to be any queens that doesn't get to the bottom at some point. Yep, most queens do end up in the bottom like once, maybe twice. It's just you know all the challenges are very very different. So I feel like if she kind of keeps this up, maybe she does, maybe she doesn't. If she does end up in the bottom and other girls are drawing lipsticks, they might just fucking send her home because, well, a little bit of a brat, I think. Yeah, I don't think she's uh, top five. I don't, think, I don't think she's top five. I know. Yeah. The other thing I want to talk about is alliances is not a new thing. We've seen alliances before in mm -hmm. previous seasons uh, of All Stars. Mm -hmm. The thing we've not seen before is someone double dipping and being in two separate alliances, which is what Heidi's doing. Yep. Because Heidi's in the alliance with um, the two girls, which is Candy and Kahana, I think. Uh, isn't it with Jim? Or Jimbo? Uh, oh, it's, it, it's like Candy and Jimbo. I'm not... Sure. Now. Okay. Yeah, I, I I have to look this up. I don't remember. But but basically, Heidi is in an alliance with two other two girls, and then later Heidi does a separate alliance, unbeknownst to anyone else, with Lala Ree. Ah. Uh, so, but I, I'm I'm thinking it's like, uh, what if she wins a challenge one week, yeah, and she has to pick a lipstick, and then the bottom two girls are girls from some combination of the alliances that she's in. Like, what the hell is she gonna do? Yeah, sure. That that's when she gets caught. I think. Yeah, I think. Uh, because I think the one of the alliances is I think Jimbo and Candy are one alliance, and then I think she joined that. Is that right? She, yeah, yeah. But yes. and the, then, the, then, then it must be Jimbo, Candy, and Heidi. But there's a tr like there's that. a trio. Yeah. Then I think that's them three. Yeah, it I must, think that's it must be those three. Alliance. Yeah, because they all went on tour together or something. Yeah, that, yeah. So, so they have like a yeah. they have like a bond. Yep. So okay, Jimbo, Candy, and Heidi, and then Ooh. Heidi has one with Lala. Yeah. So I feel that. If, I mean, this is all sort of out of the open, or at least the producers know it. So they can yeah, put the them in it. a situation where Heidi will have to choose one of her two alliances for extra drama. So this is definitely going to come back. It's going to bite her in the ass. It's definitely going to come back in the next few episodes. Definitely. In the season. So watch out for that. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's, it's great for us as viewers. It's, oh, God, yeah. It's, it's fucking stirring the pot. It's just well, like it's just it's just it's just you know putting the bomb there and see when it's gonna get light up and blown up. She was a bit sulky too this episode, wasn't she? She, she was, was salty. Very, yeah, let's a lot talk, of emotions for safe. Let's talk about this. This is literally my next 
uh, point is that, oh. um, yeah, like sh- s- queens being salty for being safe mm. or like feeling some sort of way about like, oh, that bitch shouldn't have won. It should have been me. Yeah. Which is like similar, right? Yep, yep, so yep. Um, definitely we saw it from Heidi in, in the Untucked for episode three that just came out last week. Yep. Yeah, she was, she was uh, boots. Def- yeah, even when uh, the guest judge Jojo Rabbit, jo- Jojo, Jojo, Siwa. <laughs> Jojo Siwa. Yeah, like her face was still a bit sour when she came yeah. in. So she was obviously well, think, feeling um, some kind of way. I think when the queens, the safe queens first came back into the workroom, um, she was like not the happiest, but like, I don't think she was like bitter yet. But I think once she found who won, that's when like, I think it kind of was the trigger. Which was weird, yes, because she should have been upset for not for being safe already. So she was upset that Jessica Correct. won. It was very weird. Yeah, basically when they were just safe and before the rest of the girls came in and they knew who was top or bottom, mm. they were talking about like who they thought was going to win. And I think she definitely didn't think Jessica was going to be the winner. So I think when she heard that Jessica won, on top of being her maybe not feeling super great about being safe, I think like the two the two factors together. It was also interesting because the producers wanted us to hear it because they subtitled it too. Definitely. So then I think there's going to be a storyline with her at some point, I don't know, giving up or something. So that they did that for a reason. Yeah. And I'll be, it'll be interesting to see what Heidi will do in the next few episodes, I think. Yeah. So There'll be something with her, I feel. Must be something with her, but like, uh, I don't know. Also like Kahana was a little bit, the other kind of thing is, you know, if you end up at the bottom and it's a thing there where they make the remaining bottom queen that didn't get eliminated, they make them count the lipsticks yep. that's in the box. Like count everyone's votes, right? Yes. Um, and obviously that the producer telling everyone, like if you voted for the queen that's still sitting there, you have to like, Confess. Yes. Obviously, obviously. Because they all do that. Otherwise, it was me and the producers didn't say shit. I wouldn't say nothing. Well, no, there was one time that it didn't happen, which was uh, What's Her Phrase from season one. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And she kept it you, a secret. You know her name. You know her name. I know. I should have got her name. I know the verse. Raka Katiti Ta. I forgot her name. I blanked on her name. Raka Katiti Ta. I forgot her name. Yeah. You know, I'm pussy, bitch. Yeah. Who, do you, who is it? I'm, I'm blanking on her I name. forgot her name too. <laughs> Don't try to vamp until I, I get the name. <laughs> this is my podcast. Oh my god! I know you're- baby, 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 baby. Remember, baby do, Sahara do remember? Yeah, she's baby like Sahara. respectfully. I don't tell, and she never revealed who she voted for. Correct. I know that was the one time. Yeah, well, so and wait, she still never revealed so, it to anybody. So that's a little different. But she, yeah, she didn't refer to it. So she won, and she did the lip sync for your for for her legacy, but she lost the lip sync. Yes. So on stage, her lip sync didn't matter, but yes. afterwards, she didn't reveal exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's that's the one time that I do remember that happening. I mean, but the thing is, like, she knew. I don't know why. Like, if I was her, like, all the cameras are there, and she even talked about not revealing it in the uh, like the confessionals or whatever. It's like she knew that like the viewers when the uh, season was going to air, All Stars three, I think mm-hmm. that she knew that viewers were going to know that she was not. You know, she was going to lie. I don't know. I would, if I was her, I would rather just like show the lipstick. But that's why it's weird. Yeah, that, and that's why it's weird. But I guess hindsight's she, 2020. She, but she's still never done it even afterwards. So no one, the, the producers have the footage and they haven't shown, haven't shown it. They haven't, they've chosen not to show it. So for whatever reason, yeah. we don't know who but she the thing, But the thing we do know for sure is that she lied. 100%. Mm. But, but, she, but she said like, oh, out of consideration for the other queens, we, me and the other queens agreed that I should not show my lipstick. But that was not the truth. Well, the thing is, because if you if you if you tell the truth, you could just show it. So that's why by not showing that's it, why you're I causing doubt. So yeah, yep. So yeah, that that part is like a little bit fucked up. But like, I feel like back to All Stars Eight that we're watching right now. I feel like Darian after the first elimination where she was in the bottom because she didn't get eliminated, she had to pull out and count who voted for who, pull out the lipsticks, and she was very very like nonchalant and very chill about. You know the three people that pulled her lipstick, and she didn't seem not one ounce like vengeful or bitter or salty that some people voted for her, which is like not the reaction I expect most queens to have. But it was like v- extremely mature. Let's put it that way. I guess I expect most queens to be fully normal because you have to do it. But then some people just play it for drama. So I think she's yeah. like, I mean, you you literally have to do it. 
Like it's actually the easiest thing in the world. I have to do yeah, this. Yeah, correct. Boom. <laughs> so correct. I think she's maybe just sensible. Yeah. She's also from an older season, so correct. Maybe she's got a bit more sense. She, in and her. then she's also got a little more extra wisdom with the experience she's and been doing. Drag I for also feel while. for her that she's kind of. It's just good for her to be back on TV as opposed to going for the crown. You know what I mean? I think uh, there's some yeah, people yeah. who are there like who more are for fighting the, for more the crown. For the image and- and yeah. for her, it's, it's with the older season queens, like the Tatianas or whatever, it's just good to be back on to like uh, be exposed to the newer generation. So Correct. I think for her being on and looking amazing with all the weight loss, that's a win. Oh, yeah, already. for sure. It's amazing now. Yep. Yeah. So partially just like, yeah, I, I totally get it. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Then Kahana is a little bit different though, where I think that's more like the typical response that Kana, uh, Kahana had when she counted the lipsticks. Yep. Uh, where, you know, there are a few girls that voted for her and then. You know, she said, like, I harbored no ill will or, like, whatever the wording she used was. But, like, you can tell on her face, like, well, uh, I'm not going to I'm not gonna forget this. She's not going to forget. And she kind of hinted that she wouldn't as well a little bit later. Yeah, she. I think she also feels that she has more things to prove being out early on her season so. and two. So she's come back with yeah. new face, new body, new everything. Yeah. And I think, yeah, she'll remember. I think she'll be one of the ones who are more spiteful. Yeah in her lipstick choices. To be honest, I don't remember that much of her from her season. Well, you do remember the opulence. She was the background character of that. Well, she, she was- She, well, she was the other she person. She was in the scene. She was the other yes, person. Like, exactly. I, I, I remember that, but like, it. there were a, a few episodes before we got to that one. No. And I don't remember her no. from like the other episodes leading up to that challenge where they did that acting challenge. Yeah, for me, it's a kind of a, not the most memorable cast on- all size eight, honestly, for me. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, when the cats was announced, I was actually kind of excited because we were getting <sighs> some, we we're getting some queens that were from uh, older seasons. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, we we're also getting some queens from like some really recent seasons and had everything in between. I always kind of like it when queens from kind of quite a few years back when they come back because it's just like, oh, like awesome. Like, what have you been up to? We haven't seen you in a while, and I just think you know I, I just like seeing that personally yeah no i'm definitely always biased towards anyone pre-season six so i'm rooting for jessica wild yeah it's kind of like pre like season six or seven it's kind of like a different era yeah because i think race, seven changed to vh1 or whatever right I, around I that time. i don't know when they changed i mean networks. season six still had those amazing untucks and also the earlier seasons they were afraid they, they just kept they said everything they weren't scared of the backlash from the fans they were like more cunty and bitchy and yeah. the untucks were savage. Oh now everyone's so PC. I, I, untucked is so civil uh, nowadays. It's just like whatever. I mean, well, uh, from, from the from the regular season, not the all-stars, we have had some like spicy moments kind of, you know, in like the last few years that are like, you know, not necessarily like, you know, must watch, but like they're very iconic moments like with um, Candy, for example, or with um, Valentina and Aja. So like there were some like moments in Untuck kind of in the more recent seasons where yeah. they were like iconic kind of. But unfortunately they're very, they're very rare and they're very character driven. So correct, like for example, correct. I think like the recent season, season four, 14, 15? 15 I think is the newest well, one. Well without Mistress Isabel Brooks, it would have been all been a love fest. And that's what I think yeah. she was saying. She was trying to call it Lucy. She was saying, well, you're saying one thing on camera because you're scared. And then you're saying something else behind everyone's yeah, back. But we didn't so. see everything. Exactly. So that's yeah. why she's like, if you had mistress, I felt was more of the older type of drag where they were shading, they were reading each other without the fear of the fans. But unfortunately the fandom is uh, pretty, can be pretty toxic and pretty aggressive yeah. and pretty racist and all that sort of no, stuff. The, no, the, the fandom is like so much more. I, I've never like, just very generally, like I've not been like down with, it. I think, you know, like 98% of people of fans and stuff are like rational, sane people. But sometimes people are standing so hard that like, they just need to like win that online comment war at all costs. And it's just like so stupid. Like I'd never really go into comment sections for anything because like it like two comments into any kind of discussion on anything on the internet. It's like, okay, this is useless. I'm not, I, I can't read this. Yeah, It's a brick wall. It's, it's not healthy. Yeah. So well, that's why if yeah. anyone that follows my, any of my social media, if you make any comments on any of my stuff and you don't, hear a response from me it's because i usually intentionally don't check any of my comments because comments are like toxic rabbit holes a lot of the times on the internet yeah, and i just don't expose myself to that yeah no that's not smart. because i'm not appreciative of all my followers but like that's why i don't go in the comments and i don't reply and i don't yeah read that stuff it's just that's online 
sort of trolling and everything. It's it's uh, it's easier to insult someone behind the screen. So yeah, so Ooh. so annoying. So with all of that, hopefully we get. I mean, honestly, like. We, we, we love the drama because we're gays so we love some drama but yes. let's let's see how the rest of the season pans out we're only three episodes in there's gonna be a lot more to go but True. who are your so far who are your top like three or four or five that you want to see I get would to the end like to see Jimbo Jessica Wilde yeah uh I they're my two personal favorites and I I believe Candy Muse will go far because I think they like her. And I, th- I have to think that James Mansfield will go far as well. I have to fucking pull up the list of everyone because oh. it's like so many queens to like. Oh, oh. I just have to pull up this is a list of everyone that's on there right now. But, but I think Heidi and Closet might win the fame games because I think she might be the most popular. So, <laughs> so, I so, don't, so you, don't, you don't think she's going to take the crown? Uh, I, I don't. I honestly don't. I think um, I think Jumbo's been really strong and Jessica Wall is just my personal favorite. So I'm going for yeah, the yeah. Jays. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think. Jessica Wilde, like, I love her. I love, like, the energy and the fire that she has. Mm-hmm. She's, like, so witty, so she, uh, so charismatic and so talented. Yep. So I love Jessica Wilde for that. I would, I would, I would love for Jessica to win. Mm-hmm. Jimbo um, is very, very talented as well. She has, like, a slightly kooky side to her yes. that, you know, makes her, like, you know, like, pretty unique. Absolutely. Um, so I think my tops would be Jessica, Jimbo, um, I would love to see like Candy and James up there too. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know how versatile James is, but like I just I'm just not that familiar with like her drag because she didn't last like a super whatever long time on her. Yeah, season. I haven't really seen too much of her, but uh, World of Wonder seems to love her, so we'll, yeah. we'll wait and see. I guess com- comedy challenges is where she'll shine probably. Yeah, for me, I think it's like, I'm drawn to like the personality, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like for like James and Jessica and like Candy, for example, like I, I really like their personality. And mm-hmm. on top of that, they seem to be like multi-talented, right? Mm-hmm. Like, and they also kind of have this attitude where like, I'll, I'll make it work. I always love that quality in a drag queen. Like, I'll make it work. It's not like, I don't know how to sew and like, I don't know how to sing and I don't know how to act. Yep. You know, it's like, yeah, I, I just don't think, you know, that's something I like. But I think those would be like, the top four that I would love to see. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Fun times. Well, David, thank you so much for joining me on this second episode of the podcast. We did it. Yay, we did it. And you know you know what? Cheesecake. Well, yeah, we're, we're, about, we're about, yes, we're about to fucking open up some cheesecake. Yes. But the thing is, um, stay tuned and please subscribe to the podcast because next week for episode three, we're going to have another well, not another, but the same special guest joining me. Who? You. Wait, oh, oh, because it's we. Oh, shit. Oh, yes. Uh, yes. What's this called? On the. He's hot, but he's <laughs> off on the inside. What is it? <laughs> hey, what is it? It's something. Off. He's off. He's off. He's. <laughs> something is off, right? He's hot, but he's off on the inside. He's hot, but something's off. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'm I, not hot, but something's off about me. Note to self, make sure the guest knows the name of the podcast oh before hitting record. I definitely, I'm going to write that down right now. I definitely prepared for this. And the milk we had was definitely not off. <laughs> well, so, not so what we found out was um, the, the milk that was in my fridge. Best before. It was, it was best before <laughs> yesterday. And like we just kept drinking. You had some cereal. I had some cereal. I'll tell you. you I'll tell but you. It didn't smell. It didn't no, smell no, it was sour. Fine. It was okay. Yeah. It but was. Yeah. I threw it away. We have more milk. Okay. Good. We, have, we have newer milk yeah. that I'm pretty sure is not. Expired. It was cold and not off. Perfect. <laughs> yes. All right. Thanks everybody for we watching. Did it. Yeah. Bye. Bye.